Hey, it's uh, Raven Tactical here. Um, hopefully the audio works pretty good. Um, let my car warm up before I start going. It's six degrees outside. Maybe even less with the wind chill. Um, kind of a crazy thing happened between last night and this morning was um, the Iran response, I guess, to our response. Um, and then the, I guess, if you want to call it the massive buildup of the troops and equipment that are heading out that way. Um, my view on it is right now, I think we're heading towards a war. Um, nothing's been officially declared. I mean, nothing even like a normal way of declaring war, it won't be declared. But I think it's a buildup that's going to be leading to the Iran um, war that some people wanted. Um, like the McCain types, they've wanted this war for whatever reason, financial or just the arrogance, I guess, of it. Um, I'm not opposed to it, like in the sense that, like, you know, we shouldn't go to war concept, but I really, really, excuse me, I'm really hoping that, you know, we're not getting involved with someone else's war again. Um, to me, we're sitting in Iraq right now, so that's another war, and then Afghanistan, and then we're also kind of all over the place. So, I mean, realistically, let's look at what would happen, I guess. Um, you're talking about probably having to activate all the military at this point, like, pretty much, I mean, if what you saw in Iraq and Afghanistan was a pretty big chunk of the military going at one point. You're going to need a pretty big chunk of the military going to Iran. Iran is a combination of Iraq and Afghanistan. Um, the, it's huge. It's a big territory, and they have the mountains, the deserts, and all this stuff, and they have seaports and all this. Um, they're also a chemical um, weapons of mass destruction country. They have all the chemical weapons. They have nuclear weapons. Um, and they have the capability of basically doing dirty bombs and truck bombs and whatnot, all this stuff, too. It is serious. I mean, I don't want to sit there and have people ignore it. I think we really need to take it seriously and take and pray for leadership in this country at this point. Because, and pray for this country as we're about to go into this. Because I have a feeling that some people have hot heads and some people are seeing this as an election time. And then it's not really a fair thing to say, but. Sometimes you see things like at an election time where people want to show strength to get points because they think that once they do this, they have more points. And it's really sad that you'd put people's lives at risk for elections. But if this country does go end up going to a war with Iran, um, would, you know, our people are telling me right now that it would just be an air war and be over in two minutes. I don't think so. Um, they have a pretty good air defense grid. They have capabilities of responding. They have capabilities of having things. I mean, they're not obviously technology and the size of the United States military comparison, but they are also funded and backed by China and Russia. So, I mean, you have two superpowers as well backing them. And whether or not they play a role in that war or they just proxy war it, like how Russia was in Vietnam and we were in Afghanistan, or Afghanistan when they were there, um, you could see something like that, and it could be just a test bed for them to see how their new missile works, how their air defense missiles work, how this works, and, you know, because they're looking to see, you know, how does it test in combat capabilities, and let's field it, and let's just give it to Iran, because cool, here you go. Um, the big thing you're going to see, too, over there is that a lot of the European countries trade with Iran for fuel, or oil, so you're not going to get global support especially from the uh, EU and all that. And the Britons are not going to do that. So you're going to have a fuel shortage for them. And you're going to see probably rising gas prices here just because the Middle East is on fire, as always. So, I don't know. It's one of those things where I think it's a total chaos situation. And then the more... I mean, maybe it's because, you know, we're doing the Revelation series and the eschatology thing. But it's like... You keep reading this and you're like, oh, you know, you know, and then you're looking in the news and you're like, try not to do the whole, like, comparing news and the Bible so much, and, you know, you're trying to make sure it's biblical, but it's, it's a little bit strange to see how 
crazy the world can get. And this is getting crazy. I mean, it's serious enough that um, when I'm going to say that when we invaded Iraq, for whatever reasons you, do, you agree or disagree, Iraq was a war-torn country that was defeated after the Gulf War and defeated. They were pretty much defeated, well, I won't say defeated, but they were stretched thin during the 80s when they had the Iran-Iraq War. They were broke enough that they had to do the Kuwait War. And after getting crushed and bombed and everything, they were pretty, in the sanctions, they were pretty much done. So you had a country that when we went to war with them, it did take three days or four days to roll in because there wasn't much left. And they still put up a hell of a fight in some places, in some areas. And then once that turned out, then you had the insurgent thing come running through. And that's a big thing out there. So, I mean, I'm just saying we need to uh, take care of ourselves. Um, we need to actually be smart about what we're doing. Let me just check these doors quick. Oh, must have a door open. Um... But anyways, I think, you know, we need to uh, take care of ourselves and we need to be prepared because if we do go to war with Iran, a lot of things around here are going to change too. Um, there are factually known sleeper cells around and there's things that I have said before that Iran, like a sleeper cell would do, would be attacking malls, setting fires in forests. Um, Attacking public centers, things of worship, big churches, small churches, you know, get you to the point where that you can't, um, don't want to go outside anymore too much. You're afraid to go outside. I mean, once it starts, why not? Why would, what would stop them from putting IEDs on the freeway in the morning and then, you know, rush hour traffic, all of a sudden these remote detonated IEDs are blowing cars apart. I mean, you got that. And then look at the concept too of like, if you create enough terror here, and then you have soldiers and troops and Marines and airmen and all that go, Navy going overseas. And now they're reading this back home. I mean, that's just going to mess with everybody's mind. I know from personally that you can't fight a war over, over there if your mind is back here worrying about your family. So it's one of those things that I'm concerned about. Um, anyways, stay alert, stay alive with this. Uh, it's Raven Tactical here. Sorry it's kind of a blur video on things, but it's a little bit of my take on the Iran-Iraq war. Um, actually, not Iran-Iraq. The potential war that we are facing now. So again, pray for the country. and Just pray for the troops here. Pray for everybody. Because there's a strong possibility that this is going to get a little crazy. So, best of luck, people. And uh, go with God.